Today, I will be discussing about liposomes as a potential drug delivery system part 2. As we know, we already have discussed about its introduction, advantages, disadvantages, classification and method of preparation in its part 1. Today, I will be discussing about its characterization or evaluation parameters of liposomes, benefits of drug loading in liposomes, applications of liposomes, its limitations, what are the future aspects of liposomes and what are the marketed preparations of liposomes which are being available in market. So, in the starting, we will be discussing about characterization and evaluation of liposomes. The liposomes which are being prepared are characterized on mainly basic four parameters which are physical characterization, chemical characterization, biological characterization and stability testing. In physical characterization, the liposomes are being evaluated on the parameters of entrapment efficiency, vesicle shape and morphology its particle size and size distribution, phase transition behavior and drug release. And on chemical characterization, the parameters involved are phospholipid concentration, cholesterol concentration, lysolecithin concentration, phospholipid peroxidation, pH of liposomal dispersion and osmolarity. While on biological characterization, the sterility testing, pyrogenicity testing and animal toxicity studies are being carried out. And fourth one is stability, stability testing which is being carried out according to ICH guidelines. Now starting with physical characterization, the first parameter is entrapment efficiency. The method or the instrument which is used for its efficiency testing are mini column centrifugation method and protamine aggregated method. The second characterization parameter is vesicle shape and surface morphology which has been analyzed using transmission electron microscopy and freeze fracture electron microscopy. For the third parameter that is lamellarity study, small angle x-ray scattering, 3-1 PNMR freeze fracture electron microscopy is used. For particle size distribution and size distribution, many methods are there which involves light microscopy, fluorescence microscopy, transmission electron microscopy, photon correlation spectroscopy, laser light scattering, gel permeation, gel exclusion and zeta sizer. For another parameter that is surface charge, free flow electrophoresis, and zeta potential measurements are used. For phase transition behavior, it has been analyzed using DSC which is differential scanning colorimetry and the drug release is been measured using diffusion cell and dialysis tube. These are the physical characterization of liposomes. Now moving forward on to chemical characterization, the characterization parameters involve phospholipid concentration which has been analyzed by Barlett assay, Stewart assay and thin layer chromatography. Now cholesterol concentration which is the next parameter of chemical characterization. In this the instrument or analytical method used is cholesterol oxidase assay or ferric perchlorate method. For determining the lysolecithin concentration that is hydrolysis product of lecithin densitometer is used. Next, the phospholipid peroxidation is being used, is being analyzed by UV absorbance, iodimetry or GLC. Next, the phospholipid hydrolysis and cholesterol autooxidation is being analyzed using HPLC and TLC. pH meter is used for the characterization parameter of pH of liposomal dispersion and for determining osmolarity, the osmometer is being used. These are the chemical characterization parameters of liposomes. Moving forward on biological characterization, the sterility testing is being determined using aerobic or anaerobic cultures, while the pyrogenicity is determined using 
limulus, amoebocyte, lysate, test. And animal toxicity is determined by monitoring survival rate, histology and pathology. Now moving on to stability of liposomes. Stability is important for the formulation as it provides the physical, chemical, microbiological and therapeutic effect of any product. For determining stability of liposomes, it is been followed according to ICH guidelines which is being tested under following six conditions which are highest and lowest temperature for one month, next study is room temperature for 12 to 24 months, next 2 to 3 freeze thaw cycles at 20 to 25 degrees Celsius, the next study is 60 cycles per minute in a reciprocating shaker for 24 to 48 hours. Next study is done at 5 to 45 degrees Celsius temperature for 48 hours at each temperature with 6 to 8 heat cool cycles. And now next parameter involved is visual or microscopic examination which can be done by examining the liposomes in any of its physical changes. Now what are the benefits of drug loading in liposomes? As we can see, these are the on your right hand side there are some examples of drug which have been loaded in liposomes and they are being loaded for to provide specific actions like amphotericin B or minoxidil is loaded in liposomes to improve their solubility of lipophilic and amphiphilic drugs. Next, antimonials or amphotericin B or porifirins vaccines they are being loaded in liposomes as they provide passive targeting to the cells of immune system, especially cells of mononuclear phagocytic systems. Now to provide sustained release system of systematically or locally administered liposomes, they are being done on the drugs like doxorubicin, cortisones, biological proteins or peptides. Now doxorubicin is also used in liposomes to provide site avoidance mechanism. Some anti-inflammatory drugs, anti-cancerous drug are also loaded in liposomes to provide site specific targeting. Some chelators, plasmids and genes are loaded in liposomes to provide improved transfer of hydrophilic charged molecules. While some corticosteroid, anesthetics and insulin is provided in liposomes to improve the penetration into tissues. These all the examples of drugs which have been loaded in liposomes and their benefits by drug loading in liposomes. Now the main part is application of liposomes. Where are the liposomes useful in pharmacy or in healthcare system? So the main example of liposomes are liposome work as drug delivery vehicle. Liposome also work as vaccine carrier. Liposomes works in tumor therapy, also works in gene delivery. Liposomes act as artificial blood surrogates. And liposomes also act as radio pharmaceuticals and radio diagnostic carrier. So starting with drug delivery vehicle, liposomes enhances the solubilization of drugs like amphotericin B, Peclitexyl, cyclosporin, and minoxidil. Liposomes also provide protection to sensitive drug molecules like DNA, RNA, and ribozymes. Liposomes also enhance the intracellular uptake of anti-cancerous drug, antiviral drug, and antimicrobial agent. Liposomes also alter the pharmacokinetic and distribution of drug. In these ways, the liposome act as drug delivery vehicle. Now, liposomes potentiate both cell mediate and humoral immunity which act as liposomes in vaccine carrier. In vaccine carrier, liposomes also are used in immunopotentiation, immunomodulating agents like marmylate dipeptide, lipopolysaccharide and lipid can be incorporated into liposomes. Advantages of liposomes in are they are non-toxic, biocompatible and biodegradable. They also provide strong immune response. They convert non-immunogenic substance to immunogenic that are pro-lipozyme. Also they minimize 
the allergic reaction and eliminate toxicity of toxic antigens. Third application is liposomes in tumor therapy. Liposomes are drug carriers which can be administered by IV route. If liposomes are modified more hydrophilic with lipids, their circulation time in blood system increases. That's why these are called stealth liposomes which are used as carriers for hydrophilic anti-cancerous drug such as doxorubicin or mixon troxone. Now next application is in gene delivery. In this the non-viral vector systems specially engineered liposomes such as pH sensitive liposomes, fusogenic liposomes, genosomes and lipoplexes are investigated for their gene delivery potential. In this mainly the cationic liposomes deliver the content through membrane fusion by avoiding lysosomal and nucleolus degradation of DNA. Genosomes are complex formulation of DNA with various cationic liposomes. Next application is liposomes also act as artificial blood surrogates. In this the liposomes encapsulate human, hemoglobin products which can be used as artificial RBC. Sterlically stabilized liposomes bearing hemoglobin are better oxygen carriers and also they have low toxicity less platelet activation and aggregation and less hemostatic generation. Liposomes next application provide as radio pharmaceuticals and radio diagnostic carrier. Reposomes radio diagnostic application include imagining of liver, spleen, brain, lymphatics, tumor, blood pool, cardiovascular pathologies, visualization of inf inflammation, infection sites, bone marrow and eye vasculature. Liposomes are also used in the preparation of some cosmetics and dermatologist pro products. In this, the liposomes with essential oils provide an effective nourishing treatment that penetrates deeply into the skin. Liposome based on anti-aging formulation such as creams, lotions, gel and hydrogels have been formulated and launched in cosmetic market by L'Oreal in 1986. Liposomal preparations provide that is they reduce the roughness because of its interaction with corneocytes, the intracellular lipid resulting in the skin softening and smoothening. Next application is enzyme embolization. In this the liposomes deliver enzymes to lysosomal system and other sites. Beta glycosidase and alpha glycosidase are loaded in liposomes for treatment of Gaucher's and POMP disease respectively. But there are some limitations of liposomes technology due to which liposomes are not widely used and the limitations are the more is their stability, sterilization process, encapsulation efficiency and active targeting process. Moving forward for some therapeutic applications of liposomes like M4 teresin B, it is delivered by oral delivery system, ergosterol membrane in its application and disease which is being treated by M4 teresin B is mycocytic infection. Likewise, the insulin which is also administered through oral, ocular, pulmonary and transdermal route, it decreases the glucose level and it is used for diabetic mellitus. Likewise, moving forward, we will use salbutamol. It is delivered by pulmonary delivery in which the beta 2 adrenoreceptor antagonists are its application and it is used for the treatment of asthma. Likewise, ibuprofen which is delivered by oral delivery, chemoreceptor and free ending are its application and used for the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis. Moving forward, what are, what are the future aspects of liposomes? So as we know, liposomes are also showing particular promise in intracellular delivery systems for antisense molecules, ribosomes, protein peptides and DNA. Also some liposomes play critical role in intracellular messengers by modulating innate and adapted immune response by mechanisms which involve activation of 
different antimicrobial enzymatic pathway driving the fusion fission invents between endozymes which direct consequences to phagozyme maturation to antigen presentation pathway and modulation of inflammatory response also the dual drug delivery by nano size liposomal formulation is also the future aspects of liposomes that liposomes drug delivery market segmentation as we know the liposomes are been mainly used as novel drug delivery carrier in market it is used as stealth liposome technology non pegylated liposome technology and depo form liposome technology and the products which are been uh, delivered in market are liposomal doxorubicin liposomal paclitaxel liposomal amphotericin b and their applications are in fungal disease cancer therapy pain management viral vaccine photodynamic therapy and the main reason which is covered by liposome drug delivery market segmentation are north america europe asia pacific latin america middle east and africa some marketed products which are available in market in the form of liposomes are liposo liposomal amphotericin b which is presented under trade name of abelset enzon is the company which is marketing the liposomal amphotericin b and it is used for fungal infections likewise we can move forward for lipo lipotericin citrabine the trade name is deposite pesira formally skyfarmin is the company which is formulating liposomal citrabine and it is used in malignant lymphotis meningitis so these are the list of some marketed products of liposomes which are available and which are used for various diseases and been manufactured by various companies thank you